This is primarily a channel where I've been talking about some of the things I'm writing, the processes that help me to write and to be in that space or in that zone where I can add words to screen and feel confident that I've added 500 or 1000 words over the course of an hour or a couple of hours in the course of a day. But I rarely talk about these, my notebooks and the process by which my notebooks help me to be productive and keep me on track. I happen to find it really helpful and so for me pen and paper is a way that I can take my ideas from here, drop them onto a notepad or onto a block of paper and the whole process for me is really positive and helpful. Keeping a notebook doesn't have to be remotely complicated and I think the simpler you can make it the better. There are four things that I look at when I'm making my notes or when I'm managing my journals on a regular basis. First of all, you've got to decide what's important and then set goals within the roles or the activities that you allocate to yourself. Take regular time to track the progress, to review the results you've achieved, and then to repeat the cycle on a regular basis. Some people like to plan their weeks on a Sunday evening, others will plan the whole month ahead of schedule and then only review at the end of the month that has passed and others like to look at things on a day-by-day -day basis. I think I take a little bit from each of those approaches. There are no rules in terms of how you make it work for yourself. If I carry a small notebook with me, I probably use something like a Kaweco sport pen. It slips in my pocket easily. It's short and stubby enough that it's not gonna get damaged when it's in my trouser pocket, and that works really well. Let's look at some really basic notebooks. These are ones I started in 1984. These I used in the summer of that year when I was on a particular expedition to walk across Mexico from the Pacific Ocean up to the Gulf of Mexico and then out to the Caribbean. So they're really basic. Look, there's, there it says, a walk across Mexico. This was started in June of 1984 and it's basically got my diary notes as I catch up my diary every day. Very simple, very straightforward. Looks like I was carrying a couple of uh, rollerball pens with me. And notice that I've got some extracts from books that I was reading. In another one, this was from the same walk. Very simple diary. I've got drawings in it, which I just think are a beautiful reminder of things that have happened and why it was important to me. Look at this one, 2nd of August, 1984. Diary notes, little sketches, some notes about the route I was walking, things that were on my mind and that I was worrying about. I've obviously turned the book over here and I've begun it from the other side. Some more drawings or illustrations here. The inner design of, what's it say? Drawing of the same building showing internal use of wood poles and branches. And that's the building completely finished and with the lattice work and the thatching of the roof. It says bamboo and grass construction hut in Usumacinta, 2nd of August 1984. Nowadays you'll find three items that I have with me all the time. If I leave the house, not necessarily, but if I look at my desk at the end of a day or when I'm doing some planning work, it's these three books that I will often use or I will use the most. There's a video on the channel here about journaling. Have a look at it and Hopefully you'll find some things in it that are useful. A lot of that was about setting up the journal. These books are not lined. They have dot markings on the page so that you can make your own lines. You can do grid structures or boxes, or you could set up a calendar outline within your book over a couple of pages for a month, perhaps. If we look at this one, you'll see that I'm tracking and monitoring different activities throughout the week. So here I have the first four days of the week on the left hand page and then I have my Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But I'm tracking things all the time. So you can see that on Monday I did three circuits of the park. On the Tuesday I did the equivalent of two park circuits because I went somewhere else on an errand. I walked around the park twice on the Wednesday. I didn't on the Thursday. On the Friday I did three circuits which is uh, three kilometers of the park. 
and I'm tracking my walking activity. What I can do if I want to then on this half page that I give myself to do a review or a summary of the week that's happened, I can actually put down here that I went to the park four times and so I'm getting my exercise in. What else can we track? My work is mainly as a writer. So I can see that on the Monday I did 1,223 words, 300 plus on the Tuesday, 800 plus on the Wednesday, 1,000 on the Thursday, and then on the Friday I went to the cafe, 1,100 and something words. So I can track those things. What it shows me is that I had five writing sessions. What else can we look at? In terms of investment activity and having the cash flow that allows me and supports me in my writing, I can see that I had dividend income on the Monday, the Tuesday, the Thursday, and then several on the Friday. So I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six dividends. Tracking things is really useful and really important for you and I in whatever we do, whether we're working on an employed basis for an organization or a company, whether we are working for ourselves, or whether perhaps like me, you have a sort of portfolio activity where your revenue comes from several different places. Let's look at this comment here. I noticed that I've marked in red when I have listened to podcasts throughout the day. One from Rebel Author Podcast on folklore, one from Mark Dawson and the self-publishing formula, and an episode on time management. And then on Friday, I listened to one again on the Rebel Author Podcast, Joanna Penn talking about the shadow self. This is my A5 notebook, which is something that generally stays at home. If I'm going out for a couple of hours to a coffee shop and I think I will have a reflective time in the coffee shop, I will take this, not the desk diary that stays at home, but I'll take this and I'll look at various things that are significant. In terms of looking at the shadow self, some of the stuff that I listened to on that particular podcast last week was really helpful and I can use it in a story I'm currently writing which is based in Nottinghamshire and one of the things that came out of listening to Joanna Penn talk on the podcast was the way that we need to recognize as writers how we are portraying characters and what that reflects about ourselves but also the way that we have created the characters and protagonists that we're writing about so that things will come out of the story that are a true reflection of human character and human personality. If we look at this in a little bit more detail, I've written here 16 midweek writing days at 500 words per day would give me 8,000 words during December. The reason being is I had a week off from writing after November and the writing challenge that many of us take part in so that I'm writing for 16 midweek days in the course of December. It's looking good and that's one of the powers of using this really as an anchor journal to capture my thoughts and allow me to reflect on some of the things that are happening in my diary during the day which allows me to make progress. What else do I use as a journal? This is the book that's most likely to travel with me in the course of a day. Very easy, fits in the top of a shirt pocket goes in my jeans pocket. It's a very plain book. This one doesn't have any lines in it or any of the dot grid activity, but it does have this really useful little explanation of journal sizes in the back. So for example, the A4 page we're all familiar with, which then breaks down into its smaller component parts. The smaller version of the A5 is the A6. This is a Leica A6. I buy these half a dozen at a time. They're really useful. And I use it more as a catch-up note. This one, for example, I'd gone to the Anthropology Museum with a friend, John, and we spent five hours there. And I talk about some of the things that we've seen 
and some of the ideas that that visit generated. How long do these last? I noticed that this one for 21 only lasted me a year, or let me put it a different way, I was not adding a huge amount of reflective notes, and in 2021, that book was enough for the whole year. In 22, this was for nine months. October to May, again, nine months. This one I've started in June, it's almost full, so literally that will only have lasted me six months of regular journaling and note-taking. Here's the bunch of journals from 39 years ago. Something I'm using right now, an A6 booklet in winter of 2023. And these I use on a very regular basis. They are the classic hardbound moleskin books. These have small expanding pockets in the back, just as also do these. So this one, for example, what's that? That's a, a card with some stock prices and investment tracking, a photograph of my very first typewriter and office, and other bits and pieces, just keeping that in the back of my journal. So it's there for reflection and meditative thinking as and when I need it. So there you have it. That's my personal take on 40 or so years of using journals and notebooks. They haven't gone away and I don't think they ever will. For me, grabbing my pen and adding a note to my homemade diary using those grid structures within the book, that's an important part of me understanding whether I'm making progress towards the goals that are important for me. These simple notebooks allow me to capture what is important to me, to track the progress I'm making, and they give me the opportunity to open up a page and reflect on what's happened during the course of the week, whether my daily habits of walking around the park first thing in the morning, adding words to a current manuscript, keeping track of and enjoying the activities that we have as a family, managing our investment activity and portfolio work. All of that can be done with the simplest of tools as a pocket notebook. What I love about this tactile approach to life management is that you can monitor and track and understand where you are with the things that are important to you. Consider what your roles are as a spouse or a partner, a parent, a family member, a creative person, an employee, somebody working on an important project. And you can track all of those things in your simple notebook processes, maintaining control without having to submit stuff to the digital platforms. You are in control and you get to do what you want with it. There's no need to complicate any of this. Decide what's important for you and your roles that you have in life. Set goals according to those activities. Use your notebook to track the progress that you make towards the things that are important and on a regular basis, review how you're getting on.